Okay, so this one has been recommended to me a lot, and it's been requested a lot, and... Well, it's... it's pretty good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. You know, I don't have a whole lot to say about The Enemy, unfortunately, because... You know, it's just generally... Yeah, it's a good book. Like, it has a couple of things that I didn't like about it, and plenty of stuff that was decent. But overall, it's just like, yeah, this, that was good. You know, I don't have a whole lot to add about it. So this is another one of those entries in that weird genre of young adult books where some sort of disease comes through and kills off all the adults, or turns all the adults into some sort of weird zombie knockoff. And in this case, it's the second one. All the adults turn into... I mean, they call them grown-ups or strangers in the books, and I think strangers sounds better, but it, even then, it's not a great name, but, you know, they're basically just diseased humans who try to eat your flesh, uh, but you don't need to get them in the heads, so they can die normally. And, well, it's uh, in London, kids are running around, and there's a group of them that are hiding out in an old uh, department store, and then this one kid comes there who says he's from Buckingham Palace, and he says, like, hey, we have gardens over there, we have medical facilities, and we need more people, so you can just come move over to Buckingham Palace, and things will be great for you. And so they decide, okay, you know what, this area sucks, so they pack up and go over there, and the first half of the book is just them traveling across London and trying to avoid all the trouble that they run into, and the second half is them being at Buckingham Palace and realizing, like, okay, there's still some shit we gotta deal with. Now, plot-wise, I don't think this book is very good, uh, I will say that. And I, I know it's part of a series, like, I think there's six or seven in this series in total. I don't think I'm going to read the rest, because as much as I enjoyed this one, it, it just didn't pull me in in terms of, like, oh, what's gonna happen next? Uh, because, yeah, I kinda just described the whole plot there. It was... Kids go across the city to this one area, and a couple of interesting things happen, but they don't really connect together for the most part. And then once they get to Buckingham Palace, I'm not going to go into spoilers right yet, but things just aren't great, and it was very predictable what was going to happen. So, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say on that, but just the plot wasn't very interesting to me. Also, I should probably come out and say that I did try to read this book many years ago. I think I was like 14 or 15, and I, I don't know what it was. I just couldn't get into it. And like I said, I liked it now, but I just, I just wasn't able to get into it when I was younger. I read like a quarter of it, and then I just stopped. However, all that said, there are still parts of this that I really liked. Uh, I really liked the grown-ups slash strangers, weirdly enough, because... I know that they are just great value brand zombies, like I get that. They're, they're just zombies by a different name and they altered a couple of things about them. But uh, the way that it's set up, they make a little bit more sense than most of the other uh, entries in this weird adult apocalypse genre, whatever you want to call it. Or hell, even you could even go outside of adult, all the adults die and there's other series like uh, Why the Last Man, which I read not long ago where just a certain subset of the population dies. Like in Why the Last Man, it was all the men die. So th there's a weird genre in there. But anyways, um, <laughs> in uh, The Enemy, the grown-ups are genuinely pretty intimidating because they aren't as stupid as zombies and they aren't as slow as zombies. Like, near the beginning, one of the kids mentions that some of them are smart, some of them are strong, and some of them are fast, but none of them are all three. So if you're careful and prepared, you can still uh, figure out a way to deal with them. Which is, you know, interesting, but it, it does make them intimidating because, you know, you have trouble outrunning them a lot of the time. Uh, outfighting them is often the best course of action, but even then it's no guarantee of success because, you know, they're in London, they don't have firearms. Uh, and occasionally they are clever enough to set traps and stuff, so I did really like that, uh, but at the same time, you don't have to get them in the head, which makes them a little easier to take out, and, you know, at the end of the day, they do eat children, so that makes them, well, just a little bit scarier than most other zombie knockoffs. But the main thing that really 
brought this book into being good, to me at least, was the character cast. Because, I mean, how do I put this? There's a few too many, I think. I think that some of them could have been left out or combined with other characters. Uh, but that said, they're all good. You know, the, even the characters that at the beginning I thought were kind of annoying or kind of whiny, like uh, Callum, for instance, as the story goes on, you start to understand them a lot more. And by the end of the story, uh, Callum in particular is the one that got me, because by the end I did feel sorry for him, and I understood why he did the things he did, even if I didn't agree with him. And that goes for all the other characters, too. Like, Aaron, for example, or uh, Maeve, like, and Moxie, like, they all, uh, how, how, should, how should I put this? Like, they all just have multiple aspects to their personality, and I always understood them. You know, I, I felt like most of them had a, a backstory you know, they didn't just pop into existence one day, like, they had a life before all this shit went down, which sort of, uh, led into the person that they are now, and they have, you know, their own different, unique reactions to the world being destroyed, like, some people, uh, are able to sort of thrive in it, uh, to an extent, some people just really hate it and want things to go back to the way they are, some people are much more accepting of things as they are now, but they still hate it and they want to try and improve upon it, like, there's just, you know, just a lot of little aspects to their personalities which sets them apart from one another, like, I pretty much never got them confused, and just makes them, well, it just makes them good characters, yeah, like, there's not a whole lot else I can say about that. What I will say, though, is that my favorite character was Sam, because He's a little kid, I think he's only about nine years old, and he gets kidnapped by the grown-ups near the beginning, and at first everyone thinks he's dead, but he manages to escape from their nest, and he's on his own for most of the rest of the book, and he goes through some crazy, crazy shit, but even though he's a little, little kid, because that tends to be lost on people sometimes, like, these are kids that are going through this, which I think adds to the horror aspect for me at least, but even though he's a little, little kid, he still has this iron determination to survive and to get back to his sister and to get back to his friends, and honestly, like, just watching him, maybe not grow necessarily, but just watching him uh, do his best to, to live and to refuse to let himself die, like, that's just... I, I really liked it. <laughs> One last thing I want to mention is that the action scenes in this are pretty good, and, oh, well, actually, I guess there's two last things I want to mention, but whatever. The action scenes are pretty good, you know, nothing, nothing really to add there, just, yeah, they're, they're good. And, uh, also, I got this audiobook, because, you know, I'm quarantined right now, and I don't know exactly when this will go up, but, uh, it's easier to just buy stuff on Audible at this point and listen to it than it is to try and go out to the library or anything, because, library and everything is closed, but anyways, um, I, the narrator for this one is English, and he does a really good job of getting a bunch of different accents and different voices for the different characters, which probably helped me keep them straight in my head, but, um, honestly, I'm just glad that it didn't, that they went with an English narrator, because an American one would not have been able to get all the nuances there. But that's everything, you know, the enemy, it's, it's pretty good, you know? I don't have a whole lot else to say. Like, if the idea of, like, a young adult novel about kids in the apocalypse where all the adults are gone and they have to rely on themselves appeals to you, um, I don't know if this would be the first one I would recommend because, you know, like I said, there's a surprising amount of these. There's also, like, the young world in quarantine and stuff. Uh, but... You know, this one's a little bit more lighthearted than those other two, with, you know, less violence and less rape and stuff, so... I don't know, if you're looking for that same idea, but a little bit less uh, extreme, then I guess the enemy would be for you. Or if you're just looking for more of the same, then... Hell, you might enjoy it, but overall, just, yeah, enjoyable book. Not award-worthy or anything, but I liked it, and... Thanks for watching if you got this far. It's not a particularly long review, but, you know, I, I appreciate it anyways. Thanks to all of my patrons, including my $10 and up guys, Apo Sabalainen, Brother Santodes, Christopher Hawkins, Christopher Quinten, Joel, Joseph Pendergraft, and Tobacco Crow. You guys, you guys are cool, and uh, if you want to get, like, early access to my videos and 
voting on future video essay topics, which are, like, you know, not, not this, because this is just a review, but, you know, the longer ones that I actually script. If you want to vote on those, then become a patron, and if you can't do that, then like, comment, subscribe on this video, all that other stuff that I'm supposed to say at this point, and I will see you later.